السلام عليكم ورحمة الله كل عام وأنتم بخير الخير والعافية والصحة واليوم والبركة هابي عيد الفطر عيد الشكر عيد الميلاد I just came out of uh, the house in the backyard this beautiful evening weather and I can smell the the flowers of this apple tree behind me hopefully we have some apples for everyone all the guests who may come to our house this summer we have apple for everyone and I hope that tomorrow Yom Eid the Eid al-Fitr we can enjoy a nice weather as well. So now that we have this communication on live, it's almost 20 to 8, and we are close to the Maghrib time. And tonight, brothers and sisters, is a great night. Night of prayer, night of Ihya, as much as you can stay up and do dua and salat and nawafil and prayer, it is the night. So let us say a little dua that we are going to do it after the Maghrib prayer and after the iftar tonight and just practice this dua for this evening. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الذي على ما هدانا وله الشكر على ما أولانا اللهم لا تجعله آخر شهر رمضان سمته لك وارزقني العودة ثم العودة حتى ترضى وبعد الرضا O God we recognize your authority, your oneness, your glory, your greatness. And we ask you that help us to enjoy more Ramadans in our life to the point that you are satisfied from us. And even after you are satisfied, we like to continue this journey of prayer and worship and chatting with you since that is the purpose of our prayer. So there are so many different prayers for the night of Eid al-Fitr, which means the celebration of festival of breaking our fast. That is the meaning of Eid al-Fitr, fit from iftar. That's this evening we do the iftar, we break our fast, and no fasting on tomorrow, the day of Eid. Of course, not fasting in a physical form, but in a spiritual form and as I will explain later, we need to continue this season of spiritual fasting with our eyes and our ears and our tongue, in our intention, in our expressions, and in our actions. So tonight and tomorrow supposed to be the happiest night and day in our tradition. But unfortunately, because of some pressing problems 
and some crisis that's going on, we don't have that sense of joy and happiness that we're supposed to have. Crisis number one, this world war called crisis of corona that still continues. And then the crisis in Kabul, the martyrdom of almost 85 little innocent girls in Imam Hussein's uh, high school in Kabul. And then the crisis in confrontation between the Israelis and Palestinians started from Aqsa Mosque and now continues in Gaza. That genocide and this bloody bombardment and tragic situation that is going on really leaves no room for joy for anybody, for Palestinians, for Jews, for Muslims. Everybody is sad. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But what are the requests or the things that we ask from Allah, the Lord of this world, this evening? Laylatul Eid, in this Thanksgiving night. The first thing, the first small list of requests from God is al rahma al maghfira al itq min al nar These are really the three stages of the holy month of Ramadan that, O oh God, please bless us with your mercy, your forgiveness, and etmin and nar, freedom from all kinds of fires, hellfire, and any kind of fire that is burning this world. We did this fasting with that intention of interaction with you, O oh God. Every evening we broke our fast by saying, Allahumma laka sumna wa bika amanna wa alayka tawakkalna wa ala rizqika aftarna fataqabbal minna. Now we want to say the same thing, taqabbal minna. Please accept this humble uh, process of reception that we are honored to be part of this Ramadan reception. We are honored to be part of this beautiful banquet that you invited us. We were your guest, guest of God during this holy month of Ramadan. So we like you, O oh God, to, to accept taqabbal minna. And of course the Qur'an would tell us, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ God would accept your practices if you are a person of piety. Because the piety was the purpose of the holy month of Ramadan. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That the philosophy behind fasting, the wisdom, the reason for fasting in Ramadan, to achieve piety at taqwa, that is the greatest achievement. In the Holy Quran, there is one order that's repeated 69 times in the entire Qur'an, one order, 69 times. What is that order? Ittaqullah, the commandment of piety to protect your soul from all the pollution, all the diseases, 
is telling us that if your physical fasting is finished by this evening, but your spiritual fasting from all of those mubtalat, from all those pollution, you have to continue your fast. Not fast of al-akl wa shurb is not fasting from eating food, but fasting from al-kidb, wal-kibr, wal-kufr, wal-nifaq, wal-fasad, wal-hasad, wal-bukhl, wal-tama' wal-dhulm, wal-ta'addi fasting from lying, fasting from deception, fasting from jealousy, fasting from arrogance, fasting from greed, fasting from anger. This is a huge disease, anger. Just a couple of days ago, that guy in Colorado, he attacked a birthday party and killed six persons, including himself. Why? Because he was angry that why he was not invited in that birthday party. That is the problems, brothers and sisters. Piety means to protect our personality and our character from all these viruses. And that requires determination. And this is the real, the essence of taqwa, the essence of piety, is that power of determination, power of discipline, power of purity, power of resistance against evil, power of compassion, power of kindness, power of understanding, power of peace. This is something that we need, especially now that we see this anger is going on. We need this Ramadan's message. We need the message of fasting from all these viruses now more than any other time. This is why the Quran said, وَإِن تَسُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If you really think about it, if you reflect, if you understand, you realize, you recognize that fasting is good for you because this provides you a new life. This is why I said, Eid al-Fitr is Eid al-Wilada, that we are born again after one month of practicing submission and obedience to the orders of Allah. We should be able now of starting a new life. There is a saying from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, man sama imanan wa ihtisaban kharaja min dhunubihi ka yawmin wa ladadhu ummu. If someone fasts truly through this holy month of Ramadan, with faith and with calculation, with good understanding of recognizing the value of fasting, the, the purpose, the spirit of fasting, this person is going through a, a new birth of totally pure and perfect and forgiven and blessed. So let us remember the message of Ramadan, the message of resistance and piety, the message of determination and discipline, the message of dedication and devotion, the message of prayer and peace and patience. 
And that should be our resolution for Eid. What is our resolution? Is it that we fasted for one month and some of us lost some weight maybe, I hope. But really, that is one of the results of fasting. The reason we fasted was not that we made an intention to lose some weight, to fix the fatness of our body, but to fix the fatness of our soul, to fix our spirit. And now our resolution on the day of Eid is Ati'ullah. Let your life be a life of obedience and following the orders and guidance and direction and leadership of your Lord. The resolution should be Astajibullah, answer his call. Kunu Ansar Allah, be his friends, be his helpers. Don't follow the steps of the shaitan. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْتَانَ يُغْعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ Shaitan wants to make enmity and hate, violence, war and terrorism among you. Don't let shaitan to dominate our minds and our hearts and your dreams and your demands. No. Stop the Satan. And this is not something easy, brothers and sisters. That is why we need so much prayer tonight. In addition to prayer for, for mercy, forgiveness, and freedom, in addition to prayer for guidance from God and direction from God, we should emphasize in our prayer and insistently ask the Almighty to help those guys who are involved in that confrontation in fight between the Israelis and the Palestinians to end this war. This is horrible that after 73 years from 1948, the day of an Nakba, Dhikr an Nakba. You know that next Saturday is 15th of May, 73 years from Nakba. The tragedies in Deir Yassin and massive deportation of uh, Palestinians from their houses, replaced by settlers. And since I remember, I'm 64, 65 now, and I remember the first time I listened to the radio and to the news, the same news in 50 years, 60 years of my life, and for those who are 73 years, everything repeats every day. Einstein said that the definition of definition of insanity is to keep repeat the same thing and expect different result. And I was wondering that in Jewish community, I have so many friends that they are faithful, they are educated, intellectual, and I got one message from a rabbi yesterday. Rabbi Laura Jenner that sent this message about the confrontation, about this genocide that is going on in Gaza and it started from Aqsa Mosque that in the holy month of Ramadan, while people are doing their uh, prayer in Aqsa Mosque in the night of power, what was the reason to attack people who are inside the mosque? If this is not insanity, if this is not craziness, if this is not a stupidity, what is this? This rabbi says, 
This is opposite. This is the very opposite of decency. This is very opposite of Judaism. She is right, because Judaism is a journey started from justice. When Moses started the journey of Judaism, he started it with justice against the Pharaoh of his time. So Judaism is a religion of justice, like Christianity, like Islam. But unfortunately, there are so many Jews, like so many Christians, so many Muslims, those ISIS, other criminals, they don't follow the teachings of God and they make mess in the name of God. This rabbi says this is the very opposite of Judaism. This is the very opposite of vision of Jerusalem as a city of peace. This is racism. This is incitement. This is wicked. As simple as that. Why after 73 years still some people think that the solution for Israeli-Palestinian problem is military? Why still some people think that bloody bombardment is the resolution? Why they don't want to think about the pains and poverty and frustration of Palestinians living such a long, long time under oppression and occupation. Why they don't want to understand this? Understand the, the pain of discrimination, the pain of racism, the pain of hatred, the pain of fear. The pain of living for such a long time either as refugees in this world with no respect and no safety and security or living under occupation. Former President Trump and Netanyahu, they started dancing with the leader of Saudi Arabia and, and United Arab Emirates, they thought that they solved the Palestinian issues. There is a sentence in the book of President Obama in Promised Land. He said any time that he talked with Netanyahu, Netanyahu was not interested to talk about the Palestinian issue. The only issue that he was interested to talk about was Iran. He just liked to, to change the subject. Instead of thinking about the problem next door, and the solution should be next door. The solution is not in Saudi Arabia. The solution is not in United Arab Emirates. The solution is not somewhere else in Lebanon or Iran. The solution is there. When the, the president of this country, an honorable president like Jimmy Carter, called it apartheid, why those guys don't wake up? I was so pleased to see so many rabbis and so many members of Jewish community, members of characters and consciousness. They were part of demonstration just today and yesterday in many European countries. And they are saying that this is not Judaism. This is not representing us. The solution is not blood and bombardment and military and massacre and genocide. The solution is so simple. The solution is justice. And that is an order from Judaism, from Christianity, from Islam. That is the way that you can make Jerusalem a city of peace. But obviously, peace is not uh, an interest, a business that Netanyahu likes. I like part of the article that Thomas Friedman wrote in uh, New York Times, just it was yesterday or day before yesterday. And he said that, and he was right, that the, Netanyahu loves to see this problem. He's behind this problem. 
He is part of the, 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 the problem that's going on now between Palestinians and Israelis because he is known to be a criminal and he is scared that the day that he leaves his office he may end up in jail. And for that reason to buy a few more days, 12 years is not enough for this dictator. He wants to stay longer so he doesn't end it up to be in, in jail. So to change the subject, he creates all these problems. So the Jews and Palestinians have to pay the price to satisfy the, the arrogance, the ego, the criminal character of somebody like Netanyahu that he wants to problem just for for a few days. Just for a few days, for a few more days, the price should be paid by innocent people. But how many times the, the Americans, I'm not talking about Zionist Christians, that they, they think they are helping Jews, but they are hurting Jews more than anyone else. APAC of raising all this money, 70, 80, 90 million dollars of fundraising here and there, making business out of uh, fueling extremism and making this fire of extremism. They are herding Jewish people. They are the real enemies of Judaism. They are hurting people. Because how longer you want to continue this dirty war and bombardment and terrorism and violence in that part of the world? Who is going to enjoy it? Let people, Jews, Christians, Muslims, live next to one another in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the capital of these three wonderful religions, is Jerusalem, means a, a city of peace. Why you are turning the city of peace to city of war? Just to follow the agenda of some Jewish extremists that they are against the, the spirit of this divine religion? When that lady, Rachel Corey, went to Gaza years back to, to stop the Israeli bulldozer of demolishing a Palestinian house, the driver of that bulldozer ruthlessly, with the absolute brutality, crushed that American college students who went there to support the oppressed, the poor people, to call for justice. Do you think you can solve the problems this way? I'm sure the, the Jews of faith and intellect and consciousness, many of them, they are against what is going on because they know by reading the Bible, the Old Testament, that you may survive with kufr, with disbelief, but you cannot survive with oppression and injustice. And this is what the Prophet Muhammad also said, al-mulku yabqa ma'al kufr wa la yabqa ma'al zulm. Wallahu la yuhibbu al-zalimin. God doesn't love the oppressors. They cannot have salvation. You cannot have salvation while you are oppressing people. So we pray for peace tonight that this war confrontation stops. We don't want the, the rockets from Gaza to the neighboring city and not all this bombardment by the Israeli army. I mean, people in Gaza, they don't have airplane, they don't have Navy, they don't have that kind of missiles, they don't have that kind of uh, uh, defense system. 
and hundreds and hundreds of them were killed or wounded in the last two, three days. And then uh, when I read this article from Thomas uh, uh, Friedman in New York Times, there are so many comments. At that time it was 735. It was yesterday. Probably now it's much more. Somebody is saying, Mr. Friedman, would you want to be a Palestinian living in a territory occupied by Israel? I mean, you, Thomas, you are Jewish. And you yourself, you are a pro-Israeli uh, writer of pro-Israel. But I just ask you, refer to your conscience. Would you like to be one of those Palestinian living under the Israeli occupation? And then another person wrote to Friedman, he said, Israel has no intention of giving human rights to the Palestinians that they occupy. They are not interested in two-state solution, and they are not interested in making Palestinians equal citizens of Israel. So what do you want to do with these people? You are against two state solution. You don't want to make them citizens of Israel. So what is your solution? They live in their hand, in their house. You think that by killing them, how many more you want to kill? You have been killing for 73 years. And the problem is still there. So when Trump and Netanyahu, they were so happy, the, the biggest deal of the century, and they thought that the Palestinian problem is uh, finished and is forgotten. Nobody else think about it. Look what's going on. You didn't solve the problem, Mr. Trump. You didn't solve the problem. You just caused more problem that now is this explosion is the result of that kinds of policies that you had follow that, okay, Jerusalem be the, the capital of Israel, you can have your Golan Heights, you can have the embassy over there, and you recognize the illegal settlements. With all of this, you are adding more pain, more frustration, more hatred, and you are not solving the problem that way. Let the people of vision the people of wisdom solve these problems. But you cannot have you cannot have it your way all the time, my way, highway, me, myself, and I. It doesn't work that way. You should live and let live. And the solution is justice. The path to peace in Palestine is justice. Between the Palestinians and Israelis, the path is justice and understanding. And that needs wisdom. I don't know what happened to the wisdom and brain. Those people are educated with all this science and all this progress. What they have in their mind of thinking that this way they can solve this problem wake up, find an honorable, respectful, responsible way other than bloodshed and slaughtering and genocide that now you made the United Nations angry, the International Court angry, all these demonstrations all over the Arab world and European countries in the West and the East. So it's so embarrassing and it's bad that it's happened on the night of Eid that tomorrow is supposed to be day of prayer, day of charity, not day of blood and bombardment. So we pray for peace in Kabul against those criminal ISIS, the illegitimate child of Taliban, Al-Qaeda, those criminals, those takfiri organizations that they think that if you are a female, you have no right to go to a school. And it's very unfortunate, at least about the Israeli-Palestinian issue, the world is talking about it. 
But everybody is silent about the tragedy in, in Kabul. Why? Because if you are a girl, if you are Afghani, if you are poor, if you are Muslim, if you are Shia, if you go to a school, and especially if your school is called Sayyid al-Shahada, Imam Hussein school, then it looks like nobody cares. That is another chapter of injustice and hypocrisy by the criminal cults called ISIS. So brothers and sisters, for us who enjoy this democracy and this freedom, tonight is the night of prayer. Let us ask God first to protect the achievement of Ramadan, that piety protected for us so we can keep the saving of Ramadan, the saving of piety and ask him to forgive us, to bless us with mercy and freedom from fire of Nar and at the same time pray for peace in Jerusalem, in Gaza, in West Bank in Kabul, in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Iran, in Libya, in every Asian country, European country, American, North America, Central America, Africa. O oh God, we ask you, O oh Lord, to bless this planet with peace, I know that you want peace. You are the source of peace. And we know that this human being out of foolishness, the lumen jahula, out of ignorance and out of ego and arrogance and sickness of soul has created all these problems for himself and for everyone else. But, oh God, please don't punish us for the pollution that the satanic forces, the sick forces in this world created for us. We ask you in the name of people who were close to you, in the name of Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, in the name of Ahlul Bayt, in the name of justice, in the name of freedom, in the name of dignity that you gave to humanity, in the name of equality that you gave to humanity, in the name of freedom that you wanted for all human beings, and we have it in our pledge of allegiance. Oh God, we ask you to help us to bring peace to this earth. Allahumma. أنت السلام ولك السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يعود السلام oh God please end this fire that is going on between the Israelis and Palestinians between the Afghanis and anywhere else let us enjoy Eid al-Fitr, the day that we break our fast. Let us to enjoy that, O oh God. It is Eid al-Fitr. Kul amin wa antum bikhair. Wa wa salama wa baraka والليوم والصحة والعافية إن شاء الله we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. at the Islamic House of Wisdom as we start إن شاء الله صلاة العيد الفطر الساعة تاسعة صباحا في دار الحكمة الإسلامية في ديربون هايتس we have enough space for everyone and uh, we have the first prayer around 9 o'clock and we follow another prayer if needed for 10 o'clock or later based on the participation with social distance 
bring your mask and still we are in the middle of this this crisis let us say surah al-fatiha la arwah al-shuhada shuhada fi kabul wa shuhada filistin wa kull makan bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين So remember this dua for tonight after Salat al-Maghrib Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله على ما هدانا وله الشكر على ما أولانا اللهم لا تجعله آخر شهر رمضان سمته لك وارزقني العودة ثم العودة حتى ترضى وبعد الرضا Have a wonderful evening and wonderful iftar See you tomorrow inshallah والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته